know. Yes, we were talking about everything, everywhere, all at once, right? I mean, I mean, pretty good. yes. As like I said, Michelle Yeoh is always a win for me. But yeah, <laughs> like, I agree. I just, I just have loved watching her. I'm trying to think. I feel like the first time I really connected with her was Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Me too. Like, right? Like, Same saw here. that. And I was like, it's not like I hadn't seen her in things before that. But something about her in that film is just, it took it to the next level for me. Well, it's interesting. On a positive note, it's like, obviously, she was awesome in that. But like, she's having some major moments right now. Yeah. And how long that takes to achieve that. But the positive thing is, you know, you keep going, good things will happen, generally speaking, if you keep moving in a positive direction, generally, you know. I mean, the only, what is it, I, I, you know, college freshman philosophy or whatever, the only immutable law of the universe is change, right? Yeah. So if you don't like what's happening, just hold on. <laughs> Probably something different will happen. Something it might not be better, happen. but it'll be different. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. There's, you can count on that. <laughs> there's definitely change happening. It's it's like I was reaching out to a bunch of people it was like New Year's. And, uh, you know, when you stay in touch with people, something always changes in their life. Uh-huh. Always. No, it's really true. I, uh, so I hate, I both love that to a certain extent when things are hard, but I like also hate it when things are good. I'm like, no, I want this to be forever. <laughs> but yeah. you can't have that. So no. Uh, sigh well, reality <laughs> sigh reality <laughs> you know just gotta accept it for what it is that's right well this is the first one of this year it is what's good in the world and uh i feel like it's a lot of good things you know? there are i actually i was reading about um this or they're calling it a significant breakthrough a new sea salt battery that has four times the capacity of lithium wow which um would be amazing because lithium, in addition to the environmental impact, there is a lot of uh, social justice issues around the mining of lithium. Yeah, But people have access to salt and seawater most places, and we can't drink it. So yeah. using it to make batteries doesn't seem terrible. <laughs> it doesn't seem terrible. It seems a lot better than what I was watching last night about how uh, the city of Miami is going to be underwater in, <laughs> in the future. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. this is bad. I was like, did you see what was it um reminiscence i have the, yeah and that like that was the part of it that actually felt like the most realistic to me was the fact that i think it was florida's underwater and uh yeah i mean that was Pretty just kind of one of those i think so yeah i mean other civilizations have you you we have evidence of civilizations that we find artifacts from underneath the water like mm -hmm. it's, it's like okay this has happened before on some scale, you know. Well, there was even just that, like, um, where I think it's in, like, isn't it in the middle of the country where they found what essentially used to be a, a seabed? Right. And we we like to, and when I say we, I won't speak for anyone else, but I feel like it's a human tendency, and it's definitely mine to be like, this is how it is, and always was, and always shall be. <laughs> so mote it be, you know, like what. I, so let I it be it, right <laughs> and i know that's not actually what i want or how things work but there is something in me that like yearns for that kind of external stability yeah and then it's like no there was a seabed here that's what was happening and you know a long time ago and now we grow corn so you know <laughs> and, yeah. curse, and it's fine <laughs> it's not yeah. you know <laughs> exactly well so. a good change that's coming isla knows this but i was like yeah i might as well just put it out there is we're gonna be semi neighbors at some yeah. point in the in uh early uh early summer I'm moving to Colorado the w okay. great Colorado state of Colorado and uh pretty pumped about it and uh this show could be happening in person from time yeah. to time so things Crazy. change <laughs> you just see like I mean it, after the world of like we don't you know we don't see anyone ever in person now suddenly people are just willy-nilly showing up in your world <laughs> yeah. I know so many people in Colorado. It's crazy, actually. Yeah. And I got a friend uh, who I do this decoding diet culture series with Erin Nitschke. And mm -hmm. she lives like 25. She's going to live like 20. She lives like 25 miles to where I'm going to live. Nice. Uh, and I had no clue of that. I had no clue of that, by the way. I was like, yeah, no. OK, there's a lot of people in Colorado. I mean, I guess there's a lot of people everywhere. Maybe it's maybe it's, you know, <laughs> you connect with people who I don't know. I yeah. feel like I, it happens a lot. Like I was on a group 
that I got involved in for networking for consultants that yeah. I met through a woman in California. And then I connected with someone in it and they live like 10 minutes from me. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, Crazy. how is that possible? <laughs> like, no. I, I thought this was all people in California, but it is not. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, so these are all positive things, right? We're on a mm -hmm. positive train here. Yeah. We know bad things happen. You could find that anywhere. Anywhere. But here, you're going to get some good news. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's the thing is it's not, no, no one is all one thing, right? Like no matter how bad things are going, people have moments of joy and beauty, right? No matter how good your life is, you have moments of pain and hardship. Yes. But we are as humans wired to actually seek out the pain and hardship. Mm -hmm. So it's why putting yourself into an intentional space to say, Hey, let me, let me look at the reasons, verifiable reasons. <laughs> Yeah. To to have some sense of like connection and hope. I didn't actually have this one on my list, but I found this website by this guy has been going on for 20 years, like talking about how to create positive, healthy male interactions. And mm -hmm. I'd never heard of it. And I pay attention for that kind of stuff. And it's like, if there's one like that, there's probably so many more that yeah. I just don't know about, right? Or anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good news is not amplified enough. And, you know, obviously ratings and things go, people tend to look at things that are more salacious, scandalous, and, you know, the and weird way is giving people what they like. People like the car crash. It's mm -hmm. a weird phenomenon that humans like, they're like, oh, let's see the, the tragedy, you know, but there's so much good out there. It's just not getting amplified on the same level. So we're trying to give it some juice, trying to give it yeah. some juice, you know. So what do you have for us, Aisla? The other one actually is another one I thought it was pretty cool. It's both old and new. They, um, in the Netherlands in December, there was an article published about this vehicle for people with disabilities. It, they call it, um, it's a micro car. It's called micro mobility. So it's small enough that it can ride in like the bus lanes and stuff like that. But it's large enough to hold a wheelchair or other um, support equipment. So folks that have been traditionally kind of a little bit more housebound or dependent. It opens up a little bit more freedom for them. Um, it doesn't go fast. Like it's not for the the freeway or anything, but it um, it gives them that door-to-door -door mobility, even if they aren't technically able to have a license for some reason. So it could be for like the elderly because um, it's not as hard. It's not as likely to have a harmful pot side effect <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I thought that was kind of sweet that like they, but apparently the company started in like 1997 and they've been providing these vehicles and manufacturing them for a very long time. But just recently, uh, the Netherlands saw an uptick and they produced just, I don't know if there was a law that changed, um, but they're, they are like making more of them to provide more people with that uh, possibility of, of, of mobility. Um. So, and this one's electric as, so it's low, it's also, you know, low carbon emissions and all that kind of stuff. But Man. for me, it's good news, like both that it's available, but also that there are a whole, like, I, I feel like in our, particularly in the U S we have like this very limited time frame, like you, between your twenties and your forties, you're sort of valid as a person. And then anytime outside of that, you're too old or too young or whatever. And you don't really get, and I like seeing that, you know, other cultures that maybe have a little more intergenerational engagement and it's like, yeah, it's okay if you're old or, and you need support walking and we're going to yeah. help you find that. Not, we're going to try to pretend you don't exist. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I don't know what that is, but I think it's neat to see. They apparently there's a community, they have um, dementia communities where like, basically if you have dementia, I think this is in Sweden and I look this one up, but uh so because it's so much healthier. So basically they, it's like the whole place is staffed with people to support you. Like, so you're, you're not living in a normal village, but you can go to the grocery store. And if you get confused, there's someone there to help you, <laughs> but you still nice. get to kind of engage in regular life, but it's, it's sort of a contained society, a little like Truman show, but without yeah. the weird, creepy, like <laughs> <laughs> observational stuff. Right. So just like that, it's like, let's, let's be inclusive of people's full humanity. And, you know, yeah. mobility, older aging, that kind of thing. So, it's definitely a very Western thing. You know, it's like mm -hmm. how we treat um, senior citizens and stuff. And uh, I actually think we should be doing more for senior mm -hmm. citizens. It's like, especially like if you live to be like, really, like you've been on the earth for a long time, there should be a lot of benefits to that. 
for, yeah. <laughs> from society. It's like, hey, yep. you made it. <laughs> like, yeah, like, really hard. Going. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, let's take this like, off of your plate. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, let's let's start giving you some things as, as a kind of like, this is you, a job well done. I mean, it's like, man, it's, I wish we did a little bit more of that. And if uh, nothing else, more respect, especially uh, yeah. for senior citizens as well. And, you know, we're all, you know, at some point um, we get to that point. Some people don't, uh, but, you know, if you live to be uh, in that age range, uh, you know, you want to feel validated and you, you want to, you want to be cared for. And uh, so that's a great thing that this is being done. Very positive and environmentally sound thing. Happening to- right. Like, how do you, <laughs> how do you lose with that? I mean, I don't know. It's funny that I've also been I'm up- obsessed that it's not for the show, but cult documentaries. So I'm like, yeah. the good news is we're not in one, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, but it's intense. There's so many people out there that have been, they have had their best traits and values used against them. Yes. And it's heartbreaking. Yes. So I'm actually so yes. coming out with a cult documentary. Shameless plug right now. <laughs> like, oh, really? Look at that. Uh, uh, well, I didn't, we didn't even rehearse series. this. I know. What are you doing? <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it comes out February 1st. It's been a year long project. Oh, wow. That I did with these three ladies, Olivia, Heather and Serena. And it's their firsthand accounts of being born and growing up in the children of God sex cult. And oh, wow, uh, I produced the whole thing myself. It's heavy. I mean, I, I took a I really put a lot of love into it, but it's called for the lust of God. What Ooh. it's called. It's very juicy. Five episodes, February 1st. Wow. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, I will definitely I've been listening to so many. Of course, I will listen to that one. too. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get tagged on it. I promise you. <laughs> so, like, yeah. It's, wow. it's my best work as uh, like producing, editing. It's definitely mm-hmm. my best work for sure. Yeah. So, it's an intense topic. Yes. So it's great. That's good news. I think that's good news. <laughs> and for these ladies and for me, it's just been a very emotional journey hearing the yeah. stories. And not only is it, I think, a great series, it's a healing moment and for them as well. So there I've, you know, I've been in contact with them all for an entire year going over this, the pre-production the actual production, post-production, they've been involved in every element. So everything that's in there, they have approved all of it. It is, it's been an awesome thing. So that is positive, but that is not my good news. No, <laughs> tell me you're good. <laughs> There's a shameless plug. I love it. And then shameless what's your good plug. News? <laughs> okay. But my good news is also transportation related. Oh. Now, obviously you're probably aware, like a lot of the listeners that over the Christmas time period or holiday season, there was mass cancellations and delays in air travel. Mm-hmm. If you were flying Southwest, yikes. Uh, yeah. Not good. Uh, yeah. But this happened to a, a bunch of stranded travelers in Orlando airport. They were all needed to go on this flight to Tennessee and the flight got canceled. Horrible. And all these mm-hmm. people on the flight were telling each other that they had all these events to go to the next day, but there wasn't a flight to the next day. So 13 of them decided to rent a, a van together they didn't know each other and Mm -hmm. luckily there was a van and they all rode the 650 mile trip together overnight to all reach their different destinations whether it's a conference a wedding and very important Mm -hmm. uh, things with family and they all became friends after that i mean that's just like a beautiful trip that's a big thing about humans coming together and doing good things with each other Mm -hmm. no that's sweet that's that's the thing is like as dark as people have the idea of who we are as people I mean you look at even the beginning of the pandemic like people were really committed to trying to help each other out like yes. we as a country are I think we have some challenges but like we're more reactive than proactive per se of course but when when we're in the midst of something a lot of times people will really show up and it's just how do we how do we help them see like, it doesn't always have to be the last minute crisis, you know, we can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's no. beautiful that like when in that moment, that's the thing that often comes out. Yeah. It's like, they all like, I don't want to miss this. So they banded together and, you know, this group of people started thinking, what, how can we actually make this happen? It's a lot of things in society is a lot of good things come from like necessity, urgency, or yeah. people come together and they have this big think tank. And then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, I have a great idea. What if we did this? You know, they all chipped in to pay for it. 
and everybody got to their destination. No traffic, no nothing. It was like went super well. And then you've got new friends in life. I mean, mm -hmm. my thing is always you can't have enough wonderful people in your life. So I'm all about it, you know. Yeah. No, I think that's really true. Um, I watched, have you heard of the Stutz documentary? It's my yes. new favorite thing. Yeah, with uh, Jonah it's, Hill, right? Yeah. yeah, it's really good. And that's one of the things that he talks about is your life force, right? The life force is your physical mm -hmm. health. That's the most important. Then your social health. And then your relationship with yourself. Like, yeah. those are your three. So, and uh, and that, that social piece, I think, for a lot of folks is a little awkward right now because we got kind of like in a weird, you know, yeah. <laughs> but it is like, you can have a genuinely good experience creating something with someone like a trip like that to, yeah. to get out of a bad situation. And maybe you don't ever talk again, but that doesn't change that that was a great opportunity to show up and engage yes. with the people around you with something positive. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know what? That's, it's such a beautiful thing. I've been in a lot of intense talks this week. I feel like that's my life anyways. <laughs> with all these... I don't know. You have a podcast in which you encourage that. So probably. I know. <laughs> and I've been like putting out crazy amount. I mean, I came out this shoot like five in a row. I was like podcast, podcast, podcast every day. It's <laughs> a thing. And I had this intense conversation about immortality the other day. It was, it was mind blowing. It was actually mm -hmm. so incredible. I was positive in the fact that I think it was a discussion about life and death, about death primarily. And so, mm -hmm. I, so it's nice to have something like much lighter sometimes to talk about too, mm -hmm. but I, I enjoy the intensity of discussion too. So I would never shy away from that, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a, I, I can be very whimsical. I mean, I do have a, a minion costume that I have worn to <laughs> um, normal places. Like I have yeah. that like going on. But also can have that, I can get real intense fast. And so it's something I've actually worked on in myself to kind of say, you know, what is this moment right here? How do I, how do I stay present to joy? Because I could so easily dive into like, it's not even like the opposite of joy per se, but just like that heavy sort of, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I think it's like anything else. If you get too much of it, it can kind of yeah. knock you off your, your, you know, balance, if you will. Yeah. So finding places to pause and just be like I said be light be focused on something uplifting um yeah and connect around laughter I think because it's yeah that's just as important as as being present to the and you need that break so you can yes. bring your full attention back to it yeah and then you can go back to like what I did last night which was watch the new Rudy Giuliani documentary oh my goodness like what happened to America's mayor I was like whoa <laughs> like Oh, wow. What is that on? You know, you know, I'm going to go watch uh, I think it now. CNN yeah. produced it, actually. But I mean, it didn't I didn't matter. It didn't care who produced it. I just was like, what is this? And I when I'm watching the first episode. I was like, this actually explain, explains everything in the first yeah. episode. You're like, mm -hmm. yes, I understand why this is <laughs> happening now. <laughs> and everybody well, has a story. You got to learn the story to kind of understand how things start moving. Like, yeah. You know. No, it's really true. I, um, it, well, and that's the thing is like, I have adult children and one of the things that I find constantly fascinating is what I worked to create for them, the structures, it was very intentional about that kind of stuff and what they perceived and remember there's 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 a Venn diagram where some of it overlaps, yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot where their and their experience is valid. Like I'm not gonna, but it's just so interesting to me. Like wow, like what we can see from the outside, what we perceive, and what people's intent are, are actually not necessarily all the same things, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's yeah. a I don't know. People are very interesting to me sometimes. Um, I I. I wish they would be more boring, but <laughs> I, wish, I wish you'd be more boring. Why don't you be more I would, boring? I would like to see like just general, you know, maybe some consistency and some stability and <laughs> some like, consistency like, people. That might be nice. Yeah. It's like, but I mean, no one is like the world is, we all have that. So yeah. at any rate, but you're saying that and it's just like one of those things that I've really been present to recently is another layer of understanding around how you can have exactly the same experience with someone but you may not actually be having the same experience they're having mm, 
Yes. And then also, too, I think like like in this case, it's like you're like, oh, what happened to this person? Like they became different. And then you go back and you actually chart the history. Yeah. They actually weren't. Yeah. They were different. It's just you weren't really paying attention. Like <laughs> at a certain, or it didn't show up in your show, world, right? Like, right. We, it wasn't in your world. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like if I meet someone at the gym. I have a gym experience of them, right? Like, I, and right. who they are outside of that. It's funny, like, it's, a, you know, I don't know if when you were a kid, you ever ran into your teacher at like the grocery store and it was just so weird. It's like, Strange. you can't be here. Teachers don't yeah. shop at my you grocery store. You don't exist outside store. of that. Yeah, you you have a role and it's over there. And, you know, and, the, and some of that's, I think, especially in this like inundation of information is probably a little bit of a, a wise defense against it. But, you know, like you said, there's a that there, there, sometimes you then get something revealed. You're like, oh, wow, that would have been good for me to be more aware. <laughs> I wish I knew that in 92. <laughs> you know, right. Like, oh, wait a minute. I was like 15 yeah, there know, you like, go. or whoever, whatever age you were, you know, <laughs> whatever. I was 23. I was in like, you just, you know, you're aware of different things in different times mm -hmm. and the meaning of it is different to you at different times. It's, you know, it's, it's literally everything everywhere all at once. It's like, wow. It's like all these different time periods and different dimensions and, it's like, yeah. how does this feel to you at, at 45, but how would that feel to you at 25? And mm -hmm. I was like, you probably didn't care that much at a certain time. And then other times you cared so much and it's just, it just depends, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think, yeah, I love the way you just brought that right back to the beginning. What do everything everywhere all at once? Like mm -hmm. that was narratively beautiful. I don't want to say any more. I feel like that's like the perfect bow. It's the perfect segue. <laughs> you know, we've had two transportation positive news. So we'll mm -hmm. see what the next one is by you. Know? Mm -hmm. so for me? What do you, what do you have oh. for us here? Oh, I have so many. I did I didn't know I got <laughs> I have more. So <laughs> I like I have a whole list here. Well, I was reading some really interesting articles about um like teen, uh, modern teens are healthy squares accordingly in the, over the last 25 years in various high income countries, such as the United States, Australia, and England, daily cigarette smoking has declined by over 80%. The prevalence and frequency of drinking declined markedly um, between 2000 and 2015, including heavy episodic drinking. Mm -hmm. Teens are having sex later um, oh, at an older age, okay. juvenile crime rates have declined 40 to 80%. Like, um, and so they're, they're saying like, as much as we think social media has problems because it also allows kids to stay in communication when they, like, they don't spend as much time with their friends, but it also means they aren't necessarily hanging out and with like no supervision in the same way. Yeah. They, that's one of the theories. They don't actually know why this is true. <laughs> this, <laughs> I, I really appreciate they're like, no one really can figure it out. They don't they really think, know. But they think some of it has to do with that, like that there's a, a piece of that ability to stay in contact without having to be in the space that makes it a little bit easier to avoid uh, situations where those um, types of risky decisions feel more inevitable. So it's kind of neat. I like that. That's, you know, it's I, I see that um, in my daughter who's growing up. She's just like more. She's not into risky behavior. Like mm -hmm. she's just like sees a lot of what's happening. She's like, no, I don't think so. You know, it's like it's just not a thing for me, you know, and I'm like, yeah. this is good. <laughs> this is good. You know, it's like it's a. Uh, I, th I think it's a very positive thing. And also like and to add to that, there's this is an interesting this is, I'm going to add on to this. I'm not okay. sure if this is positive or negative, but I, I kind of think it's positive. I, I'm just going to say I have a bias towards this. I think it's a positive, but I guess that millennials in this very large study, you know, most time when people get older, they become more conservative. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this politically. No, no, this doesn't mean that. No, it's no, not, that's just, that's just developmentally. That's just develop, that's typically become how more it goes. conservative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of things, but uh, apparently a millennial generation is becoming less conservative the older they get, which mm -hmm. I think is, I find that very interesting. Uh, I, I don't know what that means, but it's, mm -hmm. it's very interesting, I think. And it could be positive. I mean, maybe it's a positive thing, you know? I mean, I hope so. I think that it's weird because being politically conservative versus being like ideologically conservative, they, they have tricksy. I like to say like, I'm, I'm a, tr a, a liberal traditionalist, like, you know, there's, I don't know if that's really true, but I, it's, you know, it's my vicarious nature. Like I, yeah. I don't, 
I don't think I fit either box particularly well. It's one of the things yeah. I like about Colorado. I think right. one of the reasons it's such a great place to live is we have a really strong mix of very conservative and very progressive policies and people. So people have to really kind of work it out. Like you cannot yes. run a super, super conservative or, a, you know, ideologically progressive campaign without actually considering the other side or you're not going to be successful. And I think that has led to us having a really strong economic and social. Uh, we are the first state in the country to have gotten rid of qualified immunity. Wow. Really? Yep. That's incredible. Like two years. I, I didn't realize we got rid of it. I was like a friend of mine told me and I was like, and I was looking it up and yep, they got rid of qualified immunity in our state. Colorado's always first, like on it like, turns out. And, you, and, and your governor is unbelievable, by the way. Yeah. I, I love your governor. And uh, it was just all those factors, like just, I mean, in decriminalization, psychedelics, you know, weed, everything. I was like, this is my state, man. This is like my type of place. And, you know, and I am being in Washington state, which is also really cool because Washington's pretty first on a lot of stuff too. No, I love, you know, yeah. I want to be in places like that. I don't want to be going backwards. Hell no. no. <laughs> going backwards, man. But I also don't like when things are overly uh, liberal. I don't like that. And I don't like mm -hmm. when things are overly conservative. So I'm like, I, I'm, I'm a very much mm -hmm. a very moderate human being. Like, well, echo chambers are dangerous because they lead to blind spots. Completely. Completely. It's just how it is. Like if you don't have someone in the room who has a different view or someone in the conversation whose experiences are not in line with yours, then you're just not going to have access to certain yeah. kinds of wisdom and information. Um, and that's just the facts. Like there, yeah. there's no, um, no strong, I mean, that's what typically pre pre now there was a, <laughs> I read the now. price of, I read the price of loyalty. It was Paul O'Neill. He was in the first Bush's camp cabinet. And he was talking about how his experience of policy was you get all your detractors together before you try to go public and you have them, you tell them, I want to do this school thing or whatever. And your detractors find all your holes um, and then um, and then they, you know, and then you fix those and you take the policy forward. Um, yes. And I've got to catch up for my next uh, <laughs> meeting. I'm so sorry. So I have to head out soon. No, no problem. No problem at all. I really appreciate um, it. But uh, hopefully uh, we can we'll meet again in two weeks and talk about of positive course. things. We're going to talk right. about more positive things. Thank you. Right, you take care. Bye bye. Bye.